congratulations on Lightyear. I'm just thrilled finally you have a movie that people are going to pay attention to. It's yeah. been a tough road for you. Right. All these like little art films. This one might actually entertain the masses. Yeah, finally something a little more mainstream. A lot of kids grow up dreaming of being the superhero, but if anything, this sounds like more of the actual dream come true. Correct me if I'm wrong, you were a Disney guy. You wanted yeah. to, in fact, even be an animator at one point. So is this, in some ways, even more of the culmination of the dreams of a child? Yeah, this is a really big deal to me. I mean, it's so funny, my agents and managers, sometimes when they call, if everybody's on the call, that's either really good news or really bad news. Um, <laughs> and everybody was on the call. And I said, what's going on, guys? And they said, uh, well, Pixar wants to talk to you about a movie. They knew I was such a Pixar nut. And I said, guys, I'm in. I don't care what it is. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm doing it. Did they say anything about the project? The only thing they said was Buzz Lightyear. I thought, okay, you know, Tim Allen's Buzz Lightyear. How does that work? <laughs> but I obviously took the meeting and Angus gave such a good pitch. You know, he, he went up and he, they, they did a little PowerPoint thing. And he said, when I was young, my favorite movie was Star Wars. And the first slide was you know, six year old Angus covered head to toe in like Han Solo gear. And he said, you know, I had all the toys and I loved the movies and my friends and I were obsessed. And when he saw the first Toy Story movie and Andy got Buzz Lightyear and all of his friends knew who Buzz was and all of his friends were so excited to get that toy. He wanted to know what was the movie that Andy and his friends saw that made them so obsessed with the toy. And I said, well, there it is. That's the pitch. You know, that that to me at least yeah. made sense as to why the voice might be different. It's a clever way in. And I have to yeah. say, like, I mean, I, I like you love all Pixar. Who doesn't love Pixar? Yeah. And and sure enough, I think in like the first 25 minutes, I was crying watching yeah. this movie. Yeah, it gets you quick. <laughs> Do you well up during Pixar? What are the ones that have caught you that have made you a blubbering mess? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much for me. Pixar does an amazing <laughs> job. All the Toy Story movies, two, three, and four, will rip your heart out. But Inside Out gets me, Up obviously gets me, Coco got me. I mean, even in a space action adventure, they still manage to get you. So it's 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 something they do really well and they can weave in and out of those emotional pockets back to the comedy, back to the action with yeah. ease. You've had some lines that have had a lot of weight to them. I mean, everybody was waiting for your, how you were gonna say Avengers Assemble right. by the end of that. Like, yeah. and I, I mean, you kind of like understated it. It per worked perfectly. Which was more pressure filled, delivering Avengers Assemble or to infinity and beyond? Well, uh, certainly this one felt a little more intimidating because, you know, at least with Avengers Assemble, no one had done it before. You know, with, right. with this one, you feel kind of like you're wearing someone else's clothes or something. You know, you, you, you know that someone else has kind of put their stamp on it. It's an iconic line because someone else made it iconic. So I was honored to say this line. I mean, it's a line that meant a lot to me and you get goosebumps every time you do it, but you also understand that this belongs to someone else and it always will. So you, you really wanna make sure you respect that. I, I'm just curious, on the Avengers Assemble line, were there other versions of that? Yeah. Because again, yeah. you went you went kind of- Because again, you know, the, the, it almost feels like it should be shouted. And, and, and I was gonna shout the first take, and then it just felt like, you know, it almost feels like I, I knew what the camera was doing and you yeah. know that people are waiting for it. And it almost felt like a nice juxtaposition to almost, you know, go underneath it and then have everyone around me scream. Um, and yeah. we tried that the first take and then the Russos just said, that's it. Don't, that's, don't even, <laughs> don't even do the screaming one. And I, I actually don't know if we ever even tried it. I mean, I had obviously tried it at my home the night before. <laughs> um, and, and again, it could have worked. It could have worked. Um, yeah. But but I like the fact that it, you know, you almost have to lean in to Oh get yeah, it. the entire audience kind of yeah. collectively just like that. And I really love that yeah. right when yeah. I say yeah. it, Hemsworth just lets out that, you know, primal yeah. roar. And it, it almost, it would have been strange if I had screamed and everyone screamed. It almost felt better <laughs> kind of yeah. being more steely. You know, I was looking back to all of our chats over the years, and I think actually our first chat of all places was at Comic-Con in 2010, wow. like literally minutes before you went on stage yeah. for Hall H. And it's fascinating to look at, look, you've been very open and honest over the years about talking about anxiety, et cetera. Yeah. And like, you were even open then, like you were you were scared to kind of go out on that stage. Yeah. And I'm just curious, like looking back, looking at that guy, have you kind of like figured out how to like reconcile all this? Because you were like so talked about, so at the center of pop culture, at a certain point, you could have shriveled up, but you sure. somehow managed to make it work. Like most of our anxiety in life, it's about these fears of what will happen. You know, when you're able to still your mind and, and be present in your body, 
those fears melt away. Anxiety in general is predicated on living outside of the moment, you know, uh, analyzing the past and worrying about the future. So over 10 years of making these movies and being forced to do big stage sort of things, you realize that a lot of the fears that you had never really do come to fruition. And look, even if they do, I've had some things that haven't always gone the way I wanted to. When you choose not to dwell on them, to look for them, to, to read or absorb them, they do disappear. You know, you do have the opportunity every day to construct the reality in front of you. And that starts with being present and in your own mind and, and, and understanding how to stop your brain from making noise. So in a weird way, it's been my classroom. You know, this, this, this yeah. acting landscape has kind of forced you to hone some ability in terms of stilling your mind. And in turn, you realize that a lot of the fear that breeds anxiety never really happens and it's your own making. I think it's really telling too that look, look at what we're talking about. We're talking about yet another role that has a lot on it that like could intimidate many people. And I'm sure it was intimidating in some way, but like in some ways chasing it, going after it, and maybe having a decade of being cap lets you kind of go after this and know like, you know what, it's gonna be fine. Everything is always gonna be fine, always anyway, always anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's so yeah, funny. It's yeah. always about the level of perspective you're looking at it from, from, from 10,000 feet up, I mean, shoot not to be somehow morbid or cynical but eventually even this world will go away there is no this idea of kind of a permanence to your story is a fallacy there's this great idiom or story probably whatever you want to call it if, if you took a glass of water and you put a handful of salt in it and took a sip it would taste terrible but if you took that same handful of salt and put it in a lake and sipped the lake you wouldn't taste the salt at all the salt is your pain your fear your sadness be the lake, you know what I mean? Yeah. Depending upon how you're looking at the world, if you make your world small, your pain can feel loud and big. But if you recognize that you are timeless and that your thoughts are not you um, and that you're bigger than all of it, the pain melts away. On a slightly more trivial note, last year I spoke to Sebastian and Anthony, and I don't know if you remember this, I want the other side of this, what happened. I asked them both to text you at the same exact time to see who you loved more. Yeah. Now, Mackie claims he got the text back about a nanosecond ahead. What was happening at Chris's house? It's true. All on? right, so I got both texts immediately. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to blow Mackie up right now. He said in his text, don't text Sebastian, text me first. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the truth is, I would have texted them both back instantly. They're both right. dear friends of mine. I love them with all my heart. So, so. Uh, you know, Mackie knew what he was doing and classic. And the Mackie, truth is yeah. he did get the text out first. Seb was right behind him. So just for the sake of who got it at <laughs> first, I had to send it back to Mackie. Amazing. I know you've been very open about, look, I mean, you can't like top how you went out as cap and like yeah. it's going to take the right thing eventually, maybe who knows. But here's my question. Sure. There were a lot of rumors that like you could come back in the multiverse as another Marvel character you played, Johnny Storm. God, did they ever be come great? to you? Wouldn't that, Would that be have great? intrigued you? Like. No, no one's ever come to me about that. I mean, I don't exactly look the same anymore. I was 15, <laughs> almost 20 years ago. Oh my God, I'm old. Um, <laughs> but I really love that character. But I think, aren't they doing something now with... Well, they are. Fantastic but as you well know, I mean, in the multiverse, all bets, you can have six different Johnny Storms. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I guess all bets are off. Um, yeah, look, I. I would love it. I would love it. That would actually be an easier sell to me than coming back as Cap. You know what I mean? Cap is right. so precious to me. And, you know, I, I almost don't want to disrupt what, what, what a beautiful experience that was. But Johnny Storm, I feel like he didn't really get his day. That was before <laughs> Marvel really found its footing. So, uh, you right. know, I, I loved that role. And, you know, who knows? Are you happy for your buddy Haley as Captain Carter? Uh, did you see her in yeah, the universe yet? Yeah, that's right. No, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it. I mean, she's she's perfect for it. I mean, who she's yeah. truly just one of the best actresses I've ever worked with and just one of the loveliest humans. So I, I couldn't be happier for her. Back on the light year front, I'm curious. There are so many weird kind of like art opportunities that come around like on, on the press side. Did like Bezos ever call and say, hey, do you want to go into space? If you had gotten that call, would you ever have accepted? I would have absolutely accepted. I mean, I, I am dying to go to space. I'm a massive, really? massive space nerd. For me, the idea of space, the concept of what is out there, it's overwhelming to me, but it brings me an incredible sense of peace and perspective and, you know, in that kind of insignificance, I find a lot of tranquility. So for me, going to space would be a, a dream come true. 
Amazing. So you're hitting all the quadrants of Disney, obviously. Marvel, got <laughs> Pixar. Yeah, what's left? Somehow, somehow we have no Star Wars and we have no musical. Yeah, Both why of which is there no are... Star Wars? God, would I love to be in Star Wars. God, would I, I mean, I would do anything. Even if I was just a stormtrooper, I'd be thrilled. Um, you could be the world's the world's tallest Ewok. You could be anything, like, <laughs> anything you put your mind to. Yeah, I'll take a Wookie though. That's fine. Just put me in the. Just put me. I'll do it. I'll take just, it. Just keep growing um, the facial hair. It'll grow out and it'll cover your face. <laughs> yeah, no, I would love Star Wars and musicals. Look, man, I'm I'm dying for those things to happen. I was supposed to do Little Shop of Horrors a couple years ago, and then. And then, you know, COVID happened and there were budget issues. And I think actually, I think the director might have jumped off the project, but that, that was a heartbreaker. That's my favorite musical. And I, it's a great one. I know, yeah. I know. And I, I even thought about posting my audition just to, just to, just to stir the pot, just to see if I could poke <laughs> Warner Brothers a little bit to see if maybe the first time ever you could get some fan reactions to let them know, come on guys, make this thing. Oh my God. Um, I sang the dentist song for my audition and uh, I got it on my phone. And I always think, is this crazy to post this? Can it's I not crazy, this? do it. <laughs>